Hi guys, welcome back to the studio on this absolutely gorgeous sunny Tuesday morning. So what we're going to do today is we're, I'm going to mix up a base color. I'm going to do white. We're going to mix up white because I'll explain the thought process for this painting in just a minute. Um, but we're going to mix up white and I'm going to mix up Naples yellow because I wanted to, I had a lot of questions about the ratios for these paints. Uh, so I thought I would just do this, mix them up, show you exactly what I do, what I use and the ratios, and then we'll paint. Now, thought process for this painting. When I do a lot of my pearl pores, I do it so that it controls the amount of cells. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that's due to the amount of color that I put on or the actual base coat. So what I decided to do is just do white today instead of the two colors, the white and whatever color. We'll take the turquoise one because that's the last one I did. So instead of laying the turquoise and the white down and tilting it around that way and using that as a base, we're just going to use white and this is total experimental today so I have my colors all set out already I'm using the exact same colors that I used in the turquoise one um, I'm gonna lay them on the canvas the same way and we'll tilt it out and see what happens for cells because that's what I'm really curious about today. And it'll be kind of cool because it's gonna look totally, totally different than the turquoise one, even with the same colors. So I'm excited about this today, actually. But before we get to that, we'll mix up the white and the Naples yellow. So we've got a base coat, which we use satin enamel in. And we've got the Naples yellow. This is one of the colors that I'll be using today um, without. I don't put satin enamel in those colors. So this is literally how I do this. Um, it's not exact. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right here. I've got my Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. This is the base color that I'm using today. And all I do is I squirt it in there. I don't mind if there's a little bit more than what I need because it will be. I You use a surprisingly little amount of color on the base. Now this is how this goes. I don't have an exact, all I do is squirted in so this is up to about here of paint a couple of ounces of paint in there and then i use these little cups from the dollar store just these little shot glasses and i scoop up my satin enamel in there and I'll show you the satin enamel in just a minute that I use because I don't use the Deco Art satin enamel. I use house paint. So we've got just about the whole container. It's literally up to there, satin enamel. That's how I measure. You're just adding it in there. Now I'm going to show you even something here. So I used one in there, which would be enough, but this is not precise. You can even add more and I'm not worried about it. This part of it isn't the part that will mess up if it's gonna mess up. It's not here, there's no exact. If you would like an exact, it's about one part paint, half part satin enamel or so.
So for satin enamel, right now I've just got, this is all um, they had in Home Depot. At the time when I bought this, um, supply was absolutely horrendous for everywhere, including Home Depot. So I'm just using bare satin enamel. This one even is the satin enamel plus primer because this is all they had. And when I went in there, she said the primer wouldn't make a difference for this and it doesn't seem to be. I'm happy with the results, but I think what I'm gonna do is next time, just to see the difference once this is gone, cause this lasts forever and ever and ever, then I will, if they've got it in stock, I'll try it without and see what the difference is. Cause that's what we do, right? We experiment, always experimenting. But this bare satin enamel, it's the marquee brand. Um, it works for what I'm doing here. So now we've got our paint and we've got our satin enamel in there. And then I just take my flow troll and I put a roundabout an equal amount. Again, it doesn't matter. I just squirt it in there. Eyeball it. Now I'm going to mix that up a little bit. GAC 800, and I'm going to put two, one, two, maybe a little more. Again, it doesn't matter. Two generous squirts of that in there. And then I've got Liquitex uh, pouring medium. Now when you get this, make sure it says gloss. I almost got the wrong thing once when I went in there because the labels were exactly the same and it didn't say gloss on it and I didn't even notice. So we're gonna pop that open. One, two. Two generous squirts of that. That is how precise this recipe is. So that part, is not one the part to worry about right there. This part here, now we're gonna take water. This is where we have to be careful because it's all about consistency with this pour. So I'm just gonna pour a fair amount of water in there because it goes so thin. So you just start off with just put some water in there, stir it up. Check your consistency. So I'm stirring this here. I drizzle it off my stick. So I'm still getting a trace, a lump in there when I do this. So I know that that's too thick. And there's a little bit of a mound still. So I dump some more in. This is where I go a little bit slower because I don't want to take it too far. Check that. More. Check. A little bit more. So you can see how much paint this actually makes by the time we get to this stage. I just used a couple of ounces of the, um, not Liquitex Basics, sorry, the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. About half that in satin enamel about and then those two combined equal part flow trawl to those about two generous squirts of GAC 800 two generous squirts of Liquitex gloss medium and water that's getting there there. 
this part, this part is the part that you have to just be a little bit careful with. All right, that is pretty much. I'll probably end up having to pour a little bit more in by the time we mix the yellow, and that's okay. Mostly good, a little bit more. And at this point, it's just drops because I don't want to go too far. All right. That's pretty good for right at this minute, but I'll have to put more water in it, I'm sure. Now for the yellow, we'll just do this quick. I'm doing this because, of course, it's less amounts. So I'm just going to put the Naples yellow in there. Out there. See, and I even put a little bit more of that in. I'm not worried about it. Stir that in. Now this time I'm just going to put one squirt. One squirt, GAC 800, one squirt, meh, there we go. Of Liquitex pouring medium. Stir that up. too much and once you've done this a couple of times then you know sort of how far you can go before you have to check and ultimately what I'm going to do with this is just take it down for consistency to the same consistency as my base paint where when I'm dribbling, drizzling it into the cup, it goes right in, there's no mound and no trace. So I'm not gonna be using this one today because I do have a little bit left in my other cup. I just wanted to show you that and I'm almost out, so. Just a touch more. So right there is pretty good. Yep, no trace there when I do this. And when I drizzle it, no mound, it's going straight in. So that one's good. I'd be ready to use that one if we were. Put the lid quickly back on my satin enamel. And I just spilled my teal. Whoops. 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 That's okay. We'll leave it. We've got enough. wipe that container. I just um, placed the satin enamel when I showed you I placed it down and it hit the stick. That's okay. I'm just going to very quickly because I'm not sure if I've got enough of that now since I just spilled it. to 
to just quickly remix. A touch. And hey, now you get to see when I do something like spill my color, this is how quickly I can mix these now. So I had to quickly mix this. I have a lot of paints that I've got pre-mixed in bottles for my Dutch pours. And I typically just grab one of those and when I, so I have them all pre-mixed for those, which is not too far off of this consistency. So it makes it quick. because they're thinner for the Dutch pours. I think I have around about 60 colors mixed up for Dutch pours, all in bottles. So the colors that we're going to be using, I'll go over them really quick here. And sometimes that happens right there. That's okay. I'm making a mess this morning. Part of making a mess. Part of having fun. do it right now. What I am going to do is remove those two, put the lid back on my flow troll. I need to buy some more today. And clean up a little bit before we get started. try to keep it as organized as I can, even though it's always a disaster. All right, let's bring this down. So we'll go over this again. Usually I do two tone on this base. Today, just white. to see what happens with the pearls. I'm actually really curious about this. So I'll go over the colors quick. We have Artist Loft Emerald Green. We're gonna lay that one first. Then we have Golden's Prussian Blue a newly mixed, because I spilt it, Golden's Teal, Golden's Naples Yellow, this is Gold by Golden, and this one is the Iridescent Bright Fine. Then we've got Dioxazine Purple by Liquitex Basics. Iridescent White by Liquitex Basics. Alizarin Red, or sorry, Alizarin Crimson by Golden. And Pale Pink by Grumbacher. We've just mixed this white, so we'll check one more time to make sure that's good. Just a touch more like I figured.
that should do it. All right. Okay, so one of the questions I had was what was the tacky base that I used on the canvas before I poured to make the, to help the colors not all completely run away on me. It is just um, Artist Loft Flow acrylic, and I literally just go plop like that. And then I rub it in, rub it around. until it's smooth. So today I'm working on the same size canvas. I wanted to keep it, being this is an experiment and I wanted to see what happens. I wanted to kind of keep everything as close to the turquoise one as possible. So um, I'm doing this on the same size canvas that I used for that pour, which is a 12 by 24. The only difference is I am using, um, I believe this is a level one canvas rather than one of my level threes. ready to go. I'm going to just make sure that you are in frame right there. I'm going to turn up the music and we're going to have some fun. Let's have some fun. All right, so we're going to lay down. Like usual, I check and check and double check. not having the two colors for my base coat. So I did sage green was one of the first ones I did like this. And it was literally also just an experiment because I wanted to see if I could control the cells a little bit more. And it worked a charm. to be back into the studio again yesterday there's a little bit of silence on my part because we had pretty drastic weather changes in the last little while and unfortunately I get migraines I live in Calgary Canada and we have pretty drastic weather changes here and with the pressure changes I get migraines and yesterday was one of those days so I was not feeling very good so it's great to be back up on my feet again
definitely different without having the two. Oh, there we go. That'll get it. So I'm excited to do this and see what happens. Experimentation, always. sure you're back in frame. Now I find that there's not usually too many air bubbles in this base coat because it's probably because it's so thin. Definitely when I've got the thicker paints and I'm doing the straight pours and those kind, there's definitely a lot more air bubbles in there. All right, so we're gonna lay this down the same way as I laid the turquoise one so that we can get as close to a recreation of that one as possible to see the difference. So we'll just start there. don't get totally eaten up by cells. Russian Out 
oxygen purple. So I've done these with the white backgrounds before the pearl pours and I left negative space. So for this one, I won't be. I'm gonna tilt it to cover like I did for the turquoise one. crimson colors. Now we'll give them a torch. And don't worry, it sinks a little bit into this one. I find it does, probably because I leave a little bit more of the white on there, but that's okay because it comes out. All right, so now we're going to give this a quick tilt this way and that way.
So what I just did was I took that, this top corner here, I let the paint drip over top, and then I pull it back because oh, I just dripped on it. Well done. Just did my own oopsie without uh, even realizing, telling you guys what I was doing, and I just dripped on it. So, we'll just take some time here and tip those off. Whoops! All gone. And now I'm just going to take it sort of back down, let it pull down back towards the center a little bit. And then we'll see what happens. That emerald green again is so pretty. But this one, it looks completely, completely different. Which I knew it would because there's not the turquoise to really pop through on the background. But I see a lot more of the crimson in here and a lot more of the light pink, which was really lost on the other one. But those greens, that emerald green is so pretty. So I'm just going to take, pop it under there. All right. So I'm going to just shift it back down. Again, it's so pretty. I absolutely love taking these um, thinner paints all the way. And tilting it so that the paint's going over all edges. So what I'm going to do is pause the video and give it a few minutes to develop those cells and see what the difference is between the way the cells develop on this one compared to how they've developed on the two color base. This blue is really pretty right here. So that was a mixture of the Prussian blue and the teal. And I love this, how these come through here like this. It's pretty, I really like it. So we'll see how this develops and we'll be back in around about 10, 15 minutes for a close up. And we'll see how this looks. So I'm going to turn you off, guys, and I'll be back in a, just a short bit. Okay, guys, here we go. So it's been about 15 minutes or so. I've cleaned up my workspace, and we're going to take a look at this. So here, I still, I love the color blending that happens with these style pores. We have some cells right there along this top edge I let it drip over and pull back then we come down here look at this green it's so pretty 
just a few cells along the sides moving their way into the middle which this is the look that I love we'll go along here won't go up yet go along to the far end definitely a very different look so we've got some cell action there than using the two-tone base so I'll pull up they're so pretty and that is the full painting I love it it is gorgeous so that is it for today guys have a phenomenal day if you're painting today have so much fun and I'll see you next time bye